Okay, guys. So we are analyzing the entire syllabus of ESIC Deputy Director exam. So we are going keyword by keyword to understand what we should be studying under each keyword of the syllabus. So in a way, we are trying to define a boundary around each keyword. So today's keyword is current events. Okay. Uh, so who we are? So I am from Human Pietas, and uh, I must tell you that uh, Human Pietas is uniquely positioned to assist you for uh, ESIC Deputy Director exam. Asa kyo? Because on the one hand, we have been advising you for the UPSC recruitment exams like ALC, EPFO, APFC, and on the other hand, we are known, well-known market leaders for. Uh, uh, management exams like uh, your uh, HR, marketing, financial management, accounting. So we are we have been teaching these subjects uh, for multiple exams like UGC, PSU, HR officer, marketing officer since more than 10 years. So so we bring a unique synergy and uh, we are trying to add some value to UPSC ESIC exam. Okay. So ESIC exam, as we know that uh, uh, the question paper will have uh, 120 questions. Uh, each question will be probably of 2.5 marks, part A, part B. Part A is nothing but English, which will have 20 questions. The remaining questions out of 120 will be part B. About exam date, so our best guess is that this exam cannot happen before uh, Feb, March of next year. March of 2022 although it might get extended even beyond that to like May, May June also but this is the earliest uh, which uh, we are guessing it to be and why we are saying so what is the data to make this claim please look at our website go to ESIC page on the human pietas website on the bottom of that page there are a couple of FAQs go through them and that is where we have written why we are uh, claiming that this exam should not happen before February March of next year. Okay, uh, about number of seats, eligibility, form filling, salary. I'm sure you can figure it out from uh, official notification. Still, if you can't find anything, don't worry. Uh, we have given a link in the description below. Through that link, you can connect to our team directly through WhatsApp and do let us know. We'll uh, help you in whatever way we can. So what we are doing for ESIC, so guys, it's a four step plan in the step one, we'll teach you in live classes for four months in the step two, we make you go through printed booklets through which you will cover the entire syllabus. Uh, in step three, you get a access to an online question bank, which are arranged topic wise. Of course, every question is with detailed explanation. And in step four, we make you go through full length mock test paper. So if you go through these four steps with us, you are ready for uh, UPSC ESIC Deputy Director exam. You need not touch any other book. You also need not go through previous year papers, nothing else. Even current affairs is also our responsibility. And today we'll tell you what all is included in current affairs, how we plan to cover everything. Uh, we'll start in a minute only. And this four step plan has worked very well with us. This four-step plan has worked earlier also. We did UPSC ALC exam in uh, 2017. Recently, we did UPSC uh, EPFO exam in 2021. We have been doing other papers of UPSC recruitment exams like admin officers. Similarly, HR officer, marketing officer, and banks, PSUs. So this four-step strategy has worked very well with us. And we are quite hopeful that it will work for upcoming ESIC exam as well. To understand what all is included in these four steps, it's very simple. Go to our website, go to ESIC page. You can contact us by writing us an email. You can also call us anytime. And of course, uh, repeating it, that we also have given a link in the description below. That link uh, will connect you to our team via WhatsApp and you can let us know whatever you want to know okay so coming back to today's agenda today's agenda is that what we should be studying under topic of current affairs or current events 
so let us look at the keyword in the syllabus in the syllabus the keyword is current events of national and international importance so to understand uh, to draw a boundary that what all we should be studying under this topic uh, we analyzed lot of previous year papers so all of them were recruitment exam and incidentally uh, most of the papers have uh, topic on current uh, affairs or current events so let us uh, uh, look at that which all papers have we analyzed so let us look at all those papers which we have analyzed okay so uh, so we looked at uh, upsc epf exam which happened in 2021 and uh, and then uh, before it 2017 so in its syllabus it has the topic of current events okay then even at senior admin officer drdo again we have indian union and international affair including current affairs including current affairs similarly uh, for apfc also we have current events in the syllabus so what is always current event sometimes it has it is current affairs as you can see here uh, again uh, admin officer gsi current affairs store officer gsi so guys this is this was one paper store officer gsi in which the keyword was exactly same as it is in esic that current events of national and important and international importance again in store officer drdo also it was exact same keyword as it is for our esic exam similarly manager csd also another exam which happened in 2017 the keyword was exactly same as uh, current events of national and international importance similarly alc and these exams are there okay so guys now we'll show you a couple of questions and then we'll summarize everything to tell you that what all we should be studying so this is the question which appeared in the paper which uh, uh, was done a couple of days back so epf for 2021 there was a question on economic survey okay great then uh, uh, 2017 paper epfo what uh, isro did isro did in uh, 2016 and therefore this question appeared in 2017 regarding some uh, supersonic combustion engine okay 2018 so uh, uh, mau's mou's memorandum of understanding was signed between india and uganda 2018 paper and guys of course we are, we will not be showing you every question but we are trying to give you a couple of uh, uh, insights why i'm showing you these questions i'll come to that so then there was another question on um, in upsc alc 2015 the event happened in fair 15 so india signed a bilateral agreement uh, with which country on uh, civil nuclear cooperation okay then uh, yeah another one so in which uh, so what is so uh, which festival is held in Ladakh uh, in the month of Feb? Okay, related to culture. Now you might say that why this is uh, current events. Okay, uh, then uh, we'll come to that also. Then bilateral exercises, military exercises uh, between India and some other country. Uh, then. Uh, uh, then again, it's a MOU signed uh, this from uh, manager CSD paper 2017 event happened in August 2016. Okay, then uh, UPFO. Okay, now this is one uh, question which came recently in 2021 about railways and their headquarters about railways and their headquarters and uh, so uh, So this is one question. I mean, it doesn't fall in any any category so we also wanted to wanted to show you that there will be one or two questions which you will not be able to fit anywhere but they will come that is nature of any competitive exam to confuse you uh, another question on international event that uh, there was some so this exam happened in 2021 only few a few days back so there was some um, painting which was stolen in Italy and the question is that the painting is done by which painter so guys now it's very it's it's very difficult to guess these kind of questions 
why because uh, unless uh, unless the event doesn't concern india although it's an international event unless it doesn't concern india like india signing mou or india participating in something uh, the questions rarely come so uh, but this question has come so what is the point here point is that you will definitely get one or two questions which you will not be able to guess but no worries our objective is never to do every question in the exam our objective is to do more than others it's a competitive exam and so let us understand coming to summary of it let us understand that what all we should be doing and i also have with me abhinav uh, for today's session so abhinav is our expert for current affairs so i'll request abhinav to pitch in wherever required and uh, so we'll get started okay guys so let us summarize everything let us summarize everything in a single slide that what should be our strategy for current affairs so first thing first thing which people keep asking is that uh, how much current affairs up to when for which time period current affairs should be studied so guys what our advice is that uh, you should be you should be uh, studying current affairs uh, of approximately approximately 1.5 years before exam date so for esic our suggestion is that start doing current affairs from april 2020 till exam date okay second thing uh second thing is that for some events do only latest one for example if your exam date is maybe maybe in march maybe exam is in march 2022 then then you should be studying uh, although i told you to uh, study uh, current affair from april 2020 but you should be studying budget and economic survey you should not be studying which was presented in uh, uh, in feb of 2021 no but you should be studying budget and economic survey which was which would be there in feb of 2022 although i told you to start from april uh, Uh, april 2020 so focus on latest events for whatever uh, whatever is happening so current affairs starting from april 2020 let us work on this rarely a question can come beyond that also but it's very rare let us uh, try to draw a boundary on whatever we can do and not uh, everything in this world so current affairs april 2020 okay second thing uh, second thing is that guys uh, focus on factual data of current affairs focus on factual data so what do i mean by factual data it's very simple do one thing download any previous year paper of maybe upsc uh, alc or epfo or whatever recruitment exam which you can get there all of them are on the upsc website take down one paper then take down one paper of upsc civil services pre, uh, prelims exam so guys this EP, uh, this the, this recruitment exam is more factual in nature more factual in nature on the other hand you have to go much much deeper for upsc civil services so the so the level of difficulty for of current affairs uh for uh, esic exam is not same as level of difficulty of current affairs for upsc prelims exam you don't have to go that deep and once you see these questions of course you will feel that difference for example uh, in civil services most of the questions are there will be one two three four statements then part a one and two are true uh, b two, two three and four are true and so on so this this makes questions more difficult in a way this is these are multiple questions in a single questions but esic you will hardly get any question of this type there will be straight away there is a line and four options and uh, you would have also seen couple of questions which i have shown you just now so second part factual data second part factual data okay now abhinav please keep adding wherever you feel like yes sir now uh, let us, yeah now let us go one by one the first the first part is q 
schemes and programs so guys you have to go through all schemes and programs all schemes and programs which are run by the government of india do not bother about what states are doing focus on schemes and programs of government of india only by the way this this topic is also needed for see your syllabus has another keyword which is public administration and development issues so scheme schemes and programs are also included into development development issues by the way it is also part of current affairs now two three things about schemes and programs when you study schemes and programs you do not have to only look after uh, look into schemes which have been launched in last one or two years you have to go through all flagship programs of the current government even though they were done a couple of years back for example although narega was launched more than 10 years back still you can get a question on narega this is the first thing so schemes and programs every scheme and program even if this was launched a couple of years back it should be working right now so some, sometimes schemes get some merged for example now what your negp program your negp program was merged into digital india when in 2015 so you don't have to worry about any negp now this is what we are suggesting just focus on what is there in digital india now digital india which was launched in 2015 second thing for each scheme for each scheme look at the objectives look at the eligibility who are the beneficiaries okay look at the different features i mean what exactly is been given what exactly is being given in that scheme another very beautiful way of looking at these things is that these days every program or every ministry they have a website go and whatever is written under about us for that program usually you will get a question from that we have been seeing it uh by 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 the whatever I have, uh, we are suggesting you right now uh, this is based on analysis of every question not that these five six questions only we have done we have gone through every question and then only we are analyzing you uh, and then only we are uh, analyzing and uh, bringing it to you so schemes and programs i must add here one thing that uh, uh, as the uh, as sir was mentioning that what is the difference between civil services exams and what is the meaning of factual year so if you study these flagship programs like manrega itself you only need to worry about the salient features you don't need to worry about its performance right how it is performing what is the amount that has been sanctioned is it justified or not so this is a very very good example of how to pick the facts how to pick the facts or any any at your own convenience you can go on the website of any any good scheme and you can see about what are the what is the actual meaning of this fact word right okay so second point is economic survey and budget of course this is very very important but you do not have to go through every line of economic survey or every line of budget these are quite i mean big documents so i'll tell you i'll tell you how to identify that what we should be studying so basically i'm showing you what we have given in our booklets which we are giving you so guys by the way this is uh, the chapter on economic survey in our uh, uh, in our uh, printed booklets which you get at your home so you know entire economic survey from which questions can be expected has been summed up in this single page only in this single page only we have we have we have summed up similarly union budget 2021 22 again i think you would have compiled in not more than uh, four five pages only yes done i think it is done so so this is a snapshot of the booklet uh, for which you get printed version at your home coming back yes economic survey and budget you have to go through it okay let's come to third point now third point is what third point is awards so go through every award go through every award whether it is related to sports or whether it is related to literature movies science anything now in case of awards you also have to focus on some prominent international awards prominent international awards or recognition for example nobel prize for example booker prize you should also be doing these uh, uh, these awards who got uh, which award 
now there is a, a something very interesting i'll i'll show you guys for this award thing only yes look at this question so this question came in upsc alc 2017 and it is asking which one of the following is the highest civilian award of afghanistan now guys you might say i mean why 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 we should be studying guys this question came in the exam because the answer which is amir aman amanullah khan award that year was given to prime minister mr narendra modi that is why this question came and that is why they have asked which is the highest civilian award of, uh, of afghanistan so usually you will find some uh, indian connection but of course for nobel prize or for booker prize even if there is no indian connection you have to go through all important uh, international awards as well now next is next heading is that sports and games of course every tournament which is being uh, which is at least national level and in between states for example ranji and uh, or uh, durand cup you should be knowing you should be knowing what india is doing you should be knowing what india is doing at international level olympics para olympics no you should be knowing ki kon jeeta kon hara at least in finals or semi finals including the, your grand slams uh, australian open us open and all all four of all four of them so sports and games both uh, both uh, within india outside india used to be doing not only kon jeeta kon hara where it was held what was the official mascot and all those things of course uh, olympics also becomes very important this happened recently india also got uh, one gold <coughs> okay next thing yahi pe ek addition kiya ja sakta hai ke isi saal epf september mein ek question aaya tha ke uh, australian open tournament tennis tournament tha usme hara kaun उन्होंने ये नहीं पूछा कि जीता कौन इट मींस आपका कवरेज हमेशा पूरा होना चाहिए नॉट जस्ट कि कौन जीता या फिर कहाँ हो इसके अलावा भी कितने कितनी टीम्स पार्टिसिपेट कर रही है इंडिया ने अगर गोल्ड जीता है सिल्वर जीता है तो कितने जीते हैं सो लुक फॉर एनी इंपॉर्टेंट फैक्चुअल इंफॉर्मेशन ओके कंटिन्यू ओके गाइज सो नेक्स्ट थिंग इज इंटरनेशनल एग्रीमेंट और एमओ यू सो वट एवर सो वट डू मीन बाई दिस मीन दैट whichever agreement or mou india is signing with any other country that is part of your syllabus next thing global association so guys what do you mean by that prominent global association which can be like i'll give you some example but this is not a complete list g20 g7 sarc and these days we heard the quad then brics then uh, bimstack and so on you should be knowing about all of them uh, uh, when the recent uh, conference happened then uh, uh, who is member uh, for which uh, which countries are member which are not member asean then there is something like asean plus 3 plus 6 and all those things guys you should be knowing all these global associations okay then uh, next one i'll come to international bodies so what do you mean by that we mean that uh, like your imf world bank wto different organs of un then there is a body for ipr i don't remember its name right now so you have to cover these bodies as well you have to cover these international bodies as well okay uh, then uh, okay uh, yeah then next one is yeah important uh, important guys uh, important uh, important uh, index and uh, so for example you are i mean there are so many of them actually sdi then you are ease of doing business ease of doing business then you are global competitive index so i can write it g c i then there is a lpi logistic performance index and so on there are so many of them you should be knowing who are first and second in each of them you should be knowing where india stands you should be knowing how many ranks india improved compared to previous year you should also be knowing uh, which body is publishing which index which one is done by world bank which one is done by imf or i mean uh, whoever which body is producing which uh, index 
Yeah, Abhinav, anything else on this? Okay. So I think we can move. Okay. So I can move on in that case. Next one is important books, guys. Yes. Important books in last one and a half years. Uh, okay. Before I before I go to next point, I also want to show you guys how we have done it, and that will also give you very good idea. So, for example, this is our this is how we give it to you guys. This is our current affair booklets, and it covers every event from April 2020 to December 2022. So, approximately eight months are covered in around 200 pages. Eight months in 200 pages. We have made very concise for you, and you don't have to look at anything else. By the way, just go through this, and you are sorted. So, guys, what we did, we divided all current affairs into different uh, segments: games and sports, science and tech, environment, government schemes, polity, governance. There's difference between government schemes and governance. By the way, international relations, award, awards and recognition, social development, what is happening in economy, important days, culture. And so on. Then, for each of these headings, we made subheadings that in which month what happened, and it has been made quite concise, by the way. So, and Abhinav is our expert. Maybe he can tell more how uh, we put it together so that things become. And a lot of questions have come from this only in the recently had EPFO exam, including that book uh, which was asked. Um, uh, uh, I don't know what was the name of book. The book of little okay. encouragement written by Dalai Lama. So yeah. we have covered it in February 2021 current affairs. Oh, okay. Yes, great. So and so we have we, we have divided into month wise. Uh, for example, let me open uh, maybe <clears throat> government schemes for you. So this is how for each scheme, what is there, what is the happening in which scheme, what is happening. For example, Pradhan Mantri Matsya Sampada Yojana. What is the allocation scheme for? uh food champions portal pm tulip and so this so these schemes are covered different schemes are covered uh month wise similarly we can look at something else also if we have uh so what is so where i am right now okay these are different indices like multi dimensional poverty index pradhan mantri grid kalyan yojana uh, istanbul convention these events happened in july 2020 and so on so this is how we have compiled everything Uh, if you go with us, then you don't have to look at newspaper. You don't have to look at any magazine. Nothing else. Just stick to what we are giving you, and uh, you'll be sorted. So uh, coming back. Is is maybe? Is maybe. No. One more. Up current affairs. Me. One more. File. Me. Join. Yes, sir. No. Yeah. हाँ तो इसमें भी आप चीज अगर देखेंगे पढ़ेंगे तो आपको इसमें पता चलेगा इसमें दो या तीन प्रकार की चीजें हैं पहले तो आपको न्यूज मिलेगी जो फैक्चुअल न्यूज है हर एक टॉपिक की चाहे आप जैसे अगर पॉलिटी किसी सब्जेक्ट में गए हैं कोई कॉन्स्टिट्यूशनल अमेंडमेंट आया है तो आपको ये तो मिलेगा ही उसमें के कॉन्स्टिट्यूशनल अमेंडमेंट जो आया है या फिर उसके क्या फीचर्स हैं बट एट द सेम टाइम इसमें यह भी कोशिश करी गई है कि उससे रिलेटेड आसपास जो भी चीजें हैं उनको भी कवर कर लिया जाए जैसे अमेंडमेंट अगर आर्टिकल 368 का पार्ट है तो उसका भी आपको एक ब्रीफ इंट्रोडक्शन मिल जाए इन अदर वर्ड्स इसमें आपको जीके का भी थोड़ा सा एडिशन मिलेगा अगला एग्जाम्पल उठा लिया जा सकता है कि अगर आप किसी इंटरनेशनल ऑर्गेनाइजेशन से रिलेटेड इंडिया ने किसी को ज्वाइन किया है राइट right. तो उससे रिलेटेड उस ऑर्गेनाइजेशन का हेडक्वार्टर कहाँ है उस ऑर्गेनाइजेशन के फंक्शंस कहाँ हैं और या फिर उसका डायरेक्टर जनरल कहाँ है जैसे अभी डब्ल्यू का डायरेक्टर जनरल एक नाइजीरियन है सो इट वाज अ वेरी न्यू न्यूज सो आपको उसमें डब्ल्यू का भी जिक्र uh, मिलेगा तो आप इसको पढ़ेंगे तो इस जो फैक्चुअल वाली बात है वो और ज्यादा थोड़ी सी क्लियर होगी अब आगे बढ़ सकते हैं सर ओके okay, तो मैं अभिनव वाली बात को बताने के लिए आई वॉन्ट टू शो यू समथिंग सो गाइज सामने देखो दिर इज अवेंट and when did this this event happened ye yeah, june 2020 mein hua so june 2020 mein the event was so event was that uh, pm care fund pm care fund ek public authority nahi rti act mein to yahan hum logo ne kya kiya of course ye news hum logo ne bata diya humne saath mein ye bhi bata diya ki rti act mein public authority ki definition kya hai so this is how we have covered things and uh, so you get you get a very good coverage of uh, your polity also your other topics also even when you are doing your current affairs okay so guys let me come back now okay so uh, next next topic which we have to understand is important books i have told you then important days you should be knowing of course uh, hindi divas uh, this divas that divas you should be knowing these uh, there are at least 30 40 of them by the way 
okay then you should be knowing uh, in science and tech you should be knowing like like what is happening in india what is isro doing what is drdo doing uh, especially a lot of work has been done vaccine production for corona and all those things okay then next part is that you should be knowing that what uh, joint military exercises and again there's a long list but you should be knowing every joint military exercise which in which india participated india and some country india and usa india australia india china i am not sure if india does with china any so and there are different names like malabar and so on so you should be knowing these names as well next thing if there are important committees which were set up for example at but again mind it guys mind it everything at government of india level nothing at state level keep everything which is at state level everything at government of india level only okay uh, social security so why we are advising you social security because you are writing exam for esic you should definitely read esic act uh, 1948 it's a it's a good uh, idea to read it but lot of uh, social security schemes uh, 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 which are there on social security and i'll name some of them for example pradhan mantri sharam sharam yogi man dhan then pradhan mantri or prime minister whatever way we call it uh, uh, prime minister uh, laghu vyapari man dhan yojana then there is a prime minister kisan man dhan yojana then your pm jjby and pm sby you can google them uh, you get insurance at rupees 12 and 330 uh, then your uh, atal uh, bimit vyakti yojana and so on guys because you are writing exam of esic it's very good idea to go through social security schemes as well i mean although they, they are part of oral schemes and programs but especially for this exam uh, make a note that you go through them as well finally uh, go through everything which we uh, which is being done on covid 19 story including how it all started what is alpha beta lambda vaccine indian vaccine um uh, covaxin covid shield which country what formula rna based and uh, again if you are if you are with us then you need not worry again we have compiled this thing also for you so what we did let me show you if if i if, if i can show you right now so guys what we have done there is a dedicated chapter for covid only yeah this is a chapter so and i think four or five pages we have told you uh, symptoms different types of testing then uh, what else covid covid again testing how do we treat plasma therapy who solidity trial vaccine development which vaccine covid shield co vaccine herd immunity go through guys entire covid story right from march 2020 when it started and uh, yeah uh, finally uh, although slightly lesser important but go through uh, some events of culture as well uh, for example there was a question on uh, uh, that to uh, which festival is happening in ladakh every year okay so this is all for uh, current events anything else from your side abino nahi bas abhi sidhe yahi ke matlab aap isko agar padhe to kis tarike se padhe ke aap is subject ki tarah na le regularly padhte jaye baar baar padhe yaad karne ki koshish na kare aur ek aur important baat isko padhne ke liye ye bhi hai ke aap isko curious ho ke padhe राइट right, आप इंटरेस्ट लेके पढ़े कि कोई काम हो रहा है तो किस तरीके से हो रहा है वो उसको समझने की कोशिश करें इससे आपके दिमाग में एक बहुत अच्छी नेटवर्किंग भी बनेगी और ये सब्जेक्ट भी आपके लिए सहज हो जाएगा इसके अलावा मैं एक एक पॉइंट और ऐड करूंगा कि वैसे भी करंट अफेयर्स एक ऐसी चीज है जहां पर कोई भी क्वेश्चन आ सकता है और कहीं ना कहीं थोड़ा सा लक फैक्टर तो देखिए इसमें रहता ही है बट आप अगर ये देखिए कि अगर इसमें थोड़ा सा भी एडिट एडवांटेज लेंगे थोड़ा सा भी अगर आपका स्कोर ज्यादा रहा है इसमें जिसमें बाकी लोगों का स्कोर ज्यादा नहीं आ रहा है तो ऑब्वियसली आपके लिए बड़ा फायदेमंद सब्जेक्ट है या एंड अभिनव सर ने बहुत ही हमें अच्छी बात बताई है तो ये सब करने से क्या होगा जो हमने बात बताई है ये सब करने सारे सवाल नहीं होंगे नहीं इतना जरूर है अगर दस सवाल आते हैं तो शायद हमारे छह से सात हो जाएंगे ये सब करने 
which will be a significant boost which will be a major significant boost so that is where we are trying to uh, uh, take you there that is where we are we are, we are trying to take you uh, okay uh, agar finally again if you want to understand about esic deputy director program you can go on the website you can understand these four components of our preparation plan and any doubt uh, you can always connect us uh, about esic deputy director program there is a link given in description also so description mein aapko do link diya hai ek link mein agar aap click karenge aapko samajh mein aayega कि ईएसआईसी डिप्टी डायरेक्टर का प्रोग्राम के लिए ह्यूमन पाइटर्स पे हम लोग आपको कैसे तैयारी कराते हैं दूसरा लिंक क्या है एक व्हाट्सएप से आप डायरेक्टली कनेक्ट हो जाएंगे हमारी टीम से एंड इमीडिएटली यू कैन स्टार्ट डिस्कसिंग एनीथिंग विद टीम ओके गाइस थैंक यू सो मच ऑल द बेस्ट